Hello ladies and gents, I am Anna Diffin, and welcome to another need to play through, the community based campaign. To begin with, we are in the designer, just going to go over a couple of the vehicles from the previous episode, namely the very nice politician class, FAB by Richard Dastardly. This performed really, really well, and I am really looking forward to this operating and essentially doing a huge amount for us in the campaign. And uh, there's just one thing I do want to show is how it maneuvers. So I will actually send it against the Kalmar again. This is, this is, I knew it was a very effective at dodging, but what it does is, see, it start with it goes far away out, but what I'll do, I'll cut to it once it has started that orbiting procedure. Okay, so the politician is now on its orbiting path, and you can see that its path view is immensely erratic. This is causing it to move all over the place, which means that if you have a look at the detect view for the Kelmar, when it's trying to aim, that aiming pointer is going all over the place, and it's having a great difficulty just trying to aim towards the actual politician, which means that a lot of weapon systems are going to essentially miss it. And all the while, this is able to pummel its target with missiles. So, a incredibly erratic movement. You see, it's like trying to aim in and out, and in and out, all over the place. And as soon as the AI tries to target this, it just can't get a lock on and just aims at the wrong point. So, a very, very, very effective way to avoid getting shot at. So, I'm not entirely sure how it is performed, but it is an incredibly effective method regardless. I am actually going to be removing the Leander, the ADF Leander. I have figured out a slightly better variant for it, using lasers, but all in all, I wasn't too happy with the results. What I am going to be doing, I am going to be sporting in a, one of Char Charadon's designs, because Char Charadon has a history of providing me with some incredibly robust vehicles in Ashes of the Empire. So I was hoping that I will have a similar sort of vehicle in this campaign for another Nita. So I have had a couple of submissions so far, a 15k design, a 30k design, and an 83k design. Of course, we're at the 15k limit, so we're going to be using the Soldered Mayhem to begin with. So looking here, we have quite a interesting hull. It is very, very lightweight, using a lot of wood and then a chunk of heavy armor in the core here. So this is going to be immensely more buoyant. And I think that's going to be a very, very good method of keeping it protected because it's going to take a heck of a lot to disable this and make it sink just because of how buoyant all the actual alloy and wood is there. And it's using direct feed guns here as well, which is kind of what we're expecting. So it is a... Ooh, Frag HE pen depth. Hmm, interesting. I'm not too sure if the accuracy is going to do it well, but I think this should be an interesting enough design. And as always, we might change a few things up depending on how this performs. So that's it for adding in new players. What we also got is a couple of changes for Tokmerk's designs. So the C responder has been replaced with the AA responder, which is essentially the same thing, but now utilizing the AA mantlet. So I'm going to be replacing one of the current responders with that variant. We then also have the Splash class torpedo bomber, which is a small plane with a load of torpedoes there. And it's currently using a balloon to try and get it to go up. But without a target, it might have a little bit of difficulty since I spawned it in the water. But if that spawns correctly, that will actually fly quite nicely. And also, we have the Dolphin Mark II Fighter. This again, this should do quite nicely as a very cheap little design and actually give us a tiny little bit of air superiority, I hope. Because air targets are something I am a bit concerned about with the campaign with our current forces due to our over-reliance on torpedoes. Still, let's go load up the campaign and go from there. Right, so the Logidart 
is being constructed and what I'm actually going to do I'm going to get rid of this logistics craft so I am going to scrap it I'm going to take it back to the HQ and then actually scrap the design so Leander we are going to retrofit this into one of Char Charadon's the soldered mayhem there so retrofit to that design then we have the responder classes this one is going to be retrofitted to Chalk Merc's design um, no not yet so the AA class responder so retrofit that and then retrofit this design to the dolphin fighter and then retrofit this to the splash bomber though I have a feeling it's not going to change the names is it no I'll change oh, what I'll do I'll delete them and respawn them after this battle but it looks like we are actually gonna have to go into the battle with our current forces currently be blockaded can I get the repairs in effect on the responder because we don't actually I still don't think we have any repair tentacles in this force it is a bit of a problem to be honest uh, I think that's just a single atlas yeah, this is a single atlas what I'll do this time I will actually speed up combat and we will go from there so yes by the looks of it things are a little bit wrong so I'll kill this design and then we will go into actually correcting the forces uh, so it looks like a few things are a little bit wonky with how things are spawned in just because I've retrofitted the designs and not spawned in new versions so Yes, I will correct that. But let us begin this battle. Admittedly, an Atlas isn't the most dangerous foe, but we have a fairly poor amount of anti-air. Still, we have the politician firing its weapons, and the Sword of Mayhem did fire its cannons, and it just skimmed across the back surface there, but all the balloons have now been taken out from various fragmentation rounds there. And as soon as it hits the water, the torpedoes lock on. and can just see them just skimming under the surface. They're heading towards it. And that will mean, yep, here comes the first torpedo, and kaboom! Nice explosion on the prow of the Atlas there. And since it's also lower, the Sword Mayhem is getting a lot of nice strikes, but is also getting hit by our own torpedoes. The Sponder, though, is doing remarkably well, shearing off at blocks here and there, but admittedly, it is the torpedoes now, since it's in the drink, that is causing the majority of the damage to the Atlas. And in fact, it's getting blown out of the water that they keep on missing, in fact. Still, the Atlas is taken out in very short order, but not as quick as I would have hoped. There we go. A nice quick little battle there. Now let's just strap all these designs so that I can actually do something with them. Right, here we go. The new force has been designed and now they're actually named properly. So we've got the Responder, the Dolphin, the Splash, sort of Mayhem. So we have got three designs and that is because they are nice and cheap. And that is how I'd like to try and keep the vehicles going. Um, I thought, I thought I had two silence. Did one die? I don't remember one dying. Just do another silent then. Um, yeah, we've kind of got a bit too many subs really. Um, so I'm also actually going to duplicate this up as well. So we'll then have a couple of lodge darts and that will hopefully allow us to build that a little bit quicker. But now also a repair ball is definitely in order in order to speed up and effect those repairs in a timely fashion the logistics craft is building up so I'm actually going to scrap it because I've changed my mind I want to have enough resources and we're going to be able to do that very nicely with those designs in fact speaking of the resources if I go over to here this is one site I did, I actually forgot to talk about. I have a new vehicle. So the new vehicle is the outpost, the ADF outpost. And it's essentially exactly what I said. It's like the miner, but also come, well, it's two miners and a actual resource storage box all together. So it's basically the same. It's nothing particularly fancy, but we'll do 
well in terms of actual resources. Okay. Logistic starts are complete. And now the fleet number one is ready for combat testing. Come on, get right to there, and then should be able to actually capture that salvage. So this force is going a bit slow. So at the moment it isn't actually, well, at combat speed we've got a few slow designs. I think Sword Mayhem is 5 meters per second. Responder has actually been saved at 3, so oh dear. And what resources there? We have 23,000 materials, which is a great sum to begin with. Moving out. Moving out. All right, what do we have here? We have a massive number of hoplites and wanders there. And then here we have another force. And there's another force there, which is another ton of wanders. And this is getting quite worrisome with the number of forces which are actually advancing forwards to our line essentially I'm hoping with this battle we'll be able to capture and destroy the airship gantry again I might need to have Rambot go and do some work since it is a land target and I don't have land assaulting capabilities uh, this is worrisome this is really worrisome what do we have here we have a Falkenheim moving to reinforce okay it does look like we have reinforcements Load of drakes all over the place. This is just a mess. Mess waiting to happen. Well, let us prepare for the battle. And we are actually taking on the Sinner's Outpost at the same time. That's fine, actually. But it's actually quite good because it means the catfish and all that have a job to do. While the Sold Mayhem and the politician get to do damage to the gantry itself. As I mentioned, I am going to be going towards this, probably actually taking out by, well, with Rambot. Jump up on to the dolphin, and then let's begin the battle. Well, not everything's spawned in, so let's, let's just spawn everything in. Um, it is quite a lot larger than I was expecting, but that should be okay. It's just, I want to test what happens when we're outnumbered. Well, 20k to 8. The Sinner's Outpost there, uh, not really much of a threat. And neither is the Gantry itself. That's how it all performs. So let's just begin. Yeah, this battle is going to be a bit of a long one. Because straight away, the Cram Cannons from the Defence Forces on land take out the Shattered Mayhem's detection systems and one of its rear guns. I dock Rambot on it to get the repairs in effect as soon as possible, but it, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. Dolphin is having a little bit of difficulty trying to carry it out that list, and it seems that the Sinner's Outpost exploded in its nuclear explosion. I'm sorry I missed it, I just noticed that there was a huge nuclear explosion on the horizon. Though I don't think the nuke is particularly well defended, it is just near the AI, and that so when you do attack it, generally with Rambot trying to capture it, it will explode in your face, which is highly amusing. But because it's right near the AI, it is targeted by our target prioritization systems. The responder though gets stuck on the land, but it is in a decent position to try and target the enemy, and the cram cannons are still firing against the soldered mayhem there. But already we are having a little bit of difficulty with our forces taking a lot of damage and, well, getting beached on the shore, since we have a lot of torpedoes, and torpedoes are not very good at all at taking out, well, anything on the land since they are, you know, torpedoes. So I have a load of cuts here while I go around with Rambots trying to capture things. So I'm currently trying to capture the Atlas and I get shot and killed by our own forces. And this seems to happen a lot. So again, I jump onto the vehicle and straight away I jump up get inside and shot and killed by our own missiles. Not doing very well, am I? So, I actually decided, you know what, we haven't got that many enemies here, they're mostly the ground vehicles. The politician is still actually on the water, I thought it would have been beached by now, but it is still circling around, trying to keep ramming into the walls there. Still, once more capturing, so capture this one, we've decided to capture some other targets, ones which are not being shot at by missiles, and I am, well, managing to capture them without getting shot and killed. 
jumping into the next structure, another one of the defense buildings, and firing a grenade through the wall, capturing it in a single shot, which is always very nice. Then going into the houses, these are fairly easy because the AI is generally in the corners or underneath the lighting systems, which again makes them very easy targets for capturing. Again, jumping into others and capturing those in very short order once more makes it a very, very simple task indeed. Just going back to an overview because as soon as I captured that last structure, a load of enemies spawned in. I think this is an event spawn, a load of sea vipers and an atlas retrofit just spawn in. So what I do, I go and retreat a load of the ground forces and the stuff which is heavily injured, so that we can at least, you know, recover the materials after the battle. Thankfully, the Atlas is dropping into the drink, and so torpedoes start hitting it, though that did then give the Atlas a perfect opportunity to launch a load of its magnet mines towards the soldered mayhem. And those mines are actually going to start hitting the soldered mayhem, blowing it out of the water. You can see massive explosion after explosion just racking through the, the, the soldered mayhem there. Um, since I was on it to try and repair it, I am shot and killed. Once more, I am getting shot and killed quite a bit. Unfortunately, the FAB has been grounded, and so I try and take over the last building to reduce the number of targets for the FAB to, to, to deal with and I'm hoping now that it is still technically within range. Since the Atlas and its appropriate Sea Vipers are currently engaging in destroying our grounded, well, torpedo subs and the nice little responder. So the responder is doing as best as it can, but really it is the politician firing its long range missiles which are taking out the Atlas at this extreme range here. And slowly but surely, its propulsion systems are being knocked down and is going to crash down into the ground here, from where I can go and attempt to capture it with Rambot. So, heading over towards it, and I'm jumping in to take out the AI, take out the AI sections here, but I actually missed the mainframe, and I am shot and killed. So, once more, I am just going to go and try and capture it, um, but... I do manage to capture it now, actually, which is quite nice. So I'm trying to use the guns to shoot out the little planes here. But I am not doing very well. And as observing, they eventually get shot and destroyed by the array of missiles coming in from the politician, despite them almost running out of fuel. So this could have been a lot messier battle. Wow, that was a hell of a battle. We lost basically everything. I had to really use and exploit Rambot there in order to capture and basically survive. So we lost the catfish with and without torps, the dolphin, the splash, the sold mayhem, and the silent. Wow. Um, goodness. So that was messy. That was very, very, very messy indeed. Um, we are going to prepare everything up because we need this fight, but we did manage to capture the garbage patch, so yay. <laughs> oh no, I accidentally activated another force moving up here. Oh, I thought I moved in this area, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is not good, this is not good at all. At least we do have the repair ball. Repair ball, get built up. And then we can just start scrapping all of this force. The retrofit actually might keep hold of. <laughs> Large amounts of resources now being thrown back into forces there. Hopefully this force can get built up before these combat wings actually get towards us. We have an Antlion Urchin, a Vanguard retrofit, another Antlion at the Vanguard. So there's them too dangerous. That's um, quite a weak force. It must might have actually been... Um, retrofitted while we were fighting. So, right, there we go. So we've got a good amount of resources now sitting around. Let's just try and grab a load from this combat force. So we probably don't need a full 12,000 there. Move to this location and I'll build the new outpost. I'm really concerned about that force actually. If it decides to come south, we are basically doomed. Well, the Starting HQ is doomed. We've got our forces over here, so it's not 
the end of the Let's Play at the very, very least. So I am going to look at spawning in another force. I was going to look at it doing it this episode, but I do need to have a good think about this force since it almost got a complete wipe. As regards to the resource zone which we now own, there is going to be a 30k design, a tier 2 design. And with the performance of the politician of that, that last battle, in fact that it basically won us the entire thing, along with Rambot exploitiveness, I'm going to give Richard Dastardly first dibs on the T2 design. So congratulations to Richard Dastardly's rather awesome politician design. I'm hoping you do have something available, but if not, I will select something from our other Tier 2 submissions thus far, and go from there. But we have a new little battle brewing. So, little catfish, go attack this load of weak deep water guard forces. A load of easy designs. Hopefully, the Sword of Mayhem will be able to utilize a little bit more of its potency in this battle. As can be seen, we outnumber the enemy quite severely this time, which is nice, I guess. Um, but so I'm not thinking too much is going to happen here, apart from this winning outright. Now, this is a perfect example of the difference and the supreme power of our forces. As you can see there, a huge array of torpedoes have been dropped and launched immediately by all of our forces. And I'm just going to go into mainly this view to observe how those torpedoes are going through and just absolutely annihilating everything. Even the Soldier Mayhem isn't having a very good chance at taking out these surface craft because the torpedoes are just going in and hitting them and exploding, destroying these Deep World Guard craft in an immensely fast and effective manner. Well, that battle went nicely. It looks like the torpedoes did really, really well. Sort of having took a little bit of damage, but um, not too much. It doesn't have, I don't think it has any shields of that. No, it doesn't need them. Right, let's bring the force back over here. And go attack this tile. Because our forces don't think we're going to take out these here. We're going to utilize the smaller forces in order to do that. So we've got a Falkenheim here. That is currently heading towards our forces. Empty up. So how is our resource gathering here? So we've got very few resources there, but that is to be expected. Material. Ugh. Hmm. So it's saying it's costing that amount of energy per minute, but that's not how much it's actually costing me. Because the power is increasing on this design due to the fact that I have efficient engines. Maybe it's once it's up to maximum power, it will start functioning correctly. Right, so this outpost is now generating more power than it should be using. So it's map view. I don't know. Um, maybe there's something odd with regards to how RTGs and the actual miners operate because yeah, it's saying I'm using more power than I am because I'm I should be generating more, but maybe it doesn't take into account the efficiency of the electric engine. I've not really tested this mechanic. There is something quite odd going on here. If you know what's going on, uh, do inform me and it would be brilliant. And I've accidentally spawned in the logistics starts for combat. Whoops. Um, pull these guys in and pull the logistics starts out. And what we're we facing? We're facing a Falkenheim. That's not too bad, but we do have, well, a lot of, you know, subs. And submarines are not really good at taking out air. Um, do certainly need to have a look at adjusting this force a bit more, but we have lots of resources now. So I'm going to be working predominantly on a second force rather than maybe adjusting this one. I don't really want to attack that force. Try and just do everything one at a time. 
Well, we're looking like we have a good spread of forces. Problem is that we haven't got that much, we're just going to be able to take out the Falkenheim. I have a couple of missiles, but it's really going to be the Politician again, and then the Sword Mayhem, which perform the damage. Though, the Responder and the Dolphin should do decently well as well. Yes, the Responder and the Dolphin, they're small sabot guns. I wasn't really expecting too much from them, but the Valkenheim is taking an immense amount of damage as blocks being torn off it due to the sheer amount of wood being used. The AA mantlet of the new Responder is a massive addition and is doing us very, very well because the Deepwater Guard aircraft, they are pretty slow and a lot consist of a lot of wood, so the small spokens are proving to be an immensely effective weapon. The Dolphin there though did seem to crash into the design. The, uh, I think it's the Duster Marines are being quite awkward to destroy it. Torpedoes have a good chance at trying to kill them, but again, they are still very erratic and can pop out the water very easily before the torpedoes actually strike them. The politicians missiles, those just racked through the Falkenheim, and I think it did make it drop slightly, which is good because it's going to make it easier to, for the rest of our craft to hit it. The Dolphin though has been hit and knocked in the water, though I think that might have been when it, I think it, when it crashed into the Falkenheim, it destabilised it enough to crash into the sea. A couple of hits from the Catfish there, though I don't think they have um, intravehicle transmitters installed, so nice random hits there from them. The Responder though, using its AA mantlet at close range to just completely annihilate the Falkenheim. And this is now falling slowly into the water, whereupon it will be completely annihilated by the rest of our surface fleet. And, well, subsurface fleet with all the torpedoes. The Sword of Mayhem firing its barrages of direct feed guns. The last duster just disintegrating there as it pops into frame and the torpedo is now striking into the Falkenheim, or at least en route for as soon as it arrives in the drink. Just like that. The next six minutes of footage were unfortunately lost, um, though, spoiler, the Falkenheim despawned and we won the battle. Things were repaired, and what I commented on was the requirement to have a flying force, and that is to capture this path through, well, Erwick through to Janwall. There's a few tiles here we need to get through. And currently our orbiting forces go around in a big circle and they are crashing into things. So a flying air force will be able to pass through here and allow us to make those captures of those tiles. And also a flying force should be a lot faster and allow us to capture and respond to tiles in a more timely fashion than our current force, which is only around about 11, 10 meters per second, which isn't really much of a response. So I was just going to go and showcase a couple of designs, which I wish to utilize in this manner. The first being from uh, Sithin? Sithin? Sithin, yeah, Sithin. Yeah, this guy. And that is the Spearhead. A 4K design, so we'll actually be spawning in three of these. And I'm going to send them against a little flyers. Because these are quite interesting. Do need to remember that I am in another Nita, so I have to face off against something like an Atlas. And it is a regular design. These are nice little jets, and they are armed with some small fragmentation rounds. They aren't particularly potent, uh, but they do spend a good amount of shots firing, and especially against something like the balloons, they are very good. They are able to shoot them out and they destabilize enemy air. Against the sea forces though, they aren't going to be so good. However, their erratic movement and number of flares is going to keep us very, very, very well protective against IR missiles. And also, as you can be seeing, the shots being fired at them are going nowhere near them. And that means the amount of protection we're going to have just from these guys being in our force is going to be very, very good, allowing the rest of our air force to survive and not take any damage, which is a very, very good Thing to have. Next up, we have a design from en Enderine called Plane. 
it's a more cheap design. Let's have a look at how this flies here. It's got a few APS, it looks like. What's one in the wing? Oh, nope, that's just like the weapon controller. Managed to completely miss the gun. So we have Sabo, Squash, Composite, EMP, and Sabo. We have quite a range of guns on this thing. So are they actual different? Or got, so we've got two Gatling guns and these ones here okay that's quite interesting so we'll see how this faces off as well against the atlas so it does a loop looks like the small guns there are the sabo and then it's got i think is the fragmentational hash and that is very nice. Wow. It looks like it is good doing some bombing runs as well. So it dives down towards its target. So that is good to be good against ships. Yep, it dives directly towards its target and then pulls up. That is going to be very, very useful because we need that dive bombing attack in order to take out shipping in that channel. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this performs in the campaign and it's a decent speed though i don't think it's going to be particularly fast so those small little erratic spearheads will be very useful in order to draw fire away from the plane which i have a feeling could get hit by some nasty strikes particularly missiles from normal 96 or 69 we have the monk a f just over 5k so we'll be can spawn in a pair of these. It's going to have a nice little drone air force, I think, against, well, uh, the enemy deepwater guard. And what do we have here? Uh, it looks like it just has a ram and a fairly big singular missile at the top there. Oh, and a cram bomb. Oh, very nice. Let's send this against the actual shipping. So something like the Kelmar, see how the pair of them lock in and line up against a shipping target. So the missiles do fire. So fairly long pylon missiles that should do a decent amount of damage and essentially do the damage over a wide area while waiting for those bombs to come in. And they drop low over the target and dump a cram directly on target with EMP. EMP isn't necessarily always that useful against the bodyguard due to the amount of wood. However, they also often don't have that many blocks protecting their AI, allowing the surge to pass straight through the wood and destroy the AI regardless, like it has done there. So it has hit here a couple of times and surged through destroying the AI in the middle of here. So, very nice, simple design, which I do believe the pair of them will be good against enemies within that corridor there. Then from Quirt 26, we have a number of designs that have essentially been given pretty much free reign to choose what I like. I'm probably going to go for the Ecker. Um, it is an 11k design, though I might decide to change what I go for. It has a few little guns at the side there, and cram cannons at the front. So cram guns on one side so hopefully this orbits and moves towards its target otherwise this is going to be a little bit well derpy when it tries to do any attack so it's going to be orbiting on the wrong side so hopefully oh, the crams do fire there Ooh, and as expected cram cannons do nicely against the deep water guard we haven't had many cram designs so far a lot of people go for the APS. Then the machine guns though on the side don't seem to have done anything but a couple of barrages crown cannons do decently well. I have a feeling those might actually be more for anti-air capabilities so I'll spawn in a duster. Goes round maybe. We'll just see how it performs against air targets. Hmm, interesting. Looks like it's trying to match height. It does fire cram at the air targets as well. 
and it's kind of rotating round randomly. Hmm. Looks like the machine guns at the side don't seem to function that well. Uh, it's a bit of a shame, but the cram cannons at the front are doing admirably and even taking out air targets on occasion, which is really rather awesome. Just these machine guns at the side of the Eckler don't seem to be working particularly well. I'll go through some other designs, see if there's anything else which we can utilize in the campaign, but I have a feeling these will do nicely, at least for a starter, because the tiles we're facing are fairly weak. So hopefully these designs will be able to tear through them nice and quickly. But that is going to be it for this episode. So thank you very much for watching this episode of From the Depths with myself and a different playing the Another Nita community campaign. If you did enjoy the episode, please leave a like and or comment below as it is always great to hear from me a lot. Also, be sure to check out my channel for more From the Depths videos and other games. And be sure to swing by my Discord channel for more direct interactive chatting and a great place to submit and talk about designs utilized in this campaign. Otherwise, that's going to be it for now, for this video, and I shall see you next time. But until then, I'm out. Goodbye.